Okay, how's everybody doing this morning? All right, cool. So today we're going to start with a quick review of what we talked about last time. So we'll remember the different types of files that we uh, looked at in Inventor. Uh, we'll talk about how we made a part and how we made a drawing. And then we'll go on to our main topic for today, which will be a lecture about assemblies. So remember, an assembly is a combination of different parts put together in Inventor. So we'll talk about an assembly file. Um, basically, the, the way that you, you make an assembly is you start with an assembly file, you create parts, you place the parts into your assembly, and then you add constraints, which are kind of um, rules about how those parts stick together. So that's what, and then for the lab, you'll actually be uh, making an assembly. And the assembly that you'll be making today is a car. So it doesn't have to be a fancy car, but it's just, it's going to be a car with three different kinds of parts. It's going to have a body, wheels, and an axle. So um, we'll make those parts and then we'll put them together in an assembly. And that'll be the assignment for today. So any questions before we get going here? Okay. So remember, um, when we were looking at 3D modeling, there were several different types of files. So the first kind of file was a part file. This is a, the basic building block of any 3D model. This is just a thing that you're going to make. Um, hi. So uh, last time we made little things that were like maybe a mechanical bracket that, that could be um, used to hold parts together or something like that. Um, but yeah, a part is the, the building block for all other um, 3D designs. And then once you have that part, you might want to share that with other people. And in order to share it, you'll often make a drawing. So that drawing takes the part and um, shows it from different angles and also um, shows the dimensions for, for various aspects of that part, like how wide it is, how tall it is, where holes are, and things like that. So we also um, made a drawing last time. Um, so the, the basic way that we made the part was that we started with a 2D sketch. And then um, oftentimes you start with a fairly basic sketch. And then you um, extrude it in three dimensions. And then you go back and you start adding extra features like holes. And um, we also shaved the corners off of the part. Anybody remember what we called it when we shaved the corner off at an angle? Chamfer. Uh, yeah, exactly, a chamfer. Um, and then we could also uh, kind of round over some corners if we wanted. And, and what were those called? Fillet. A fillet, yeah, that's right. So, um, so we added fillets and chamfers to our part. We also went in and put in uh, holes in various locations. Um, so by building up the part step by step like that, you can, you can make it as detailed as you want. Okay. Um, so that was the basic way to make a part. And we also said that, um, that Inventor is a parametric modeling system, which means that all of the um, things that you do are defined by parameters. And you can set those parameters when you're making the drawing by using dimensions. And you can also go back and change those parameters later, even after you've done steps um, down the road. So you know you could, you could make your um, whole bracket and um, have the whole thing actually sent off to a designer and um, made and fabricated. And then maybe you test it out and find out that it's not quite strong enough. Um, and it needs to be a little bit thicker. Um, and you're a little bit worried because the thickness was one of the, the first things that you specified. And you, you don't want to have to go you know, undo all your work all the way back to that point and then kind of rebuild every, you know, change that and rebuild everything from there. Fortunately, you don't have to. Um, since this is a parametric model, you can just go in and change that particular parameter um, and specify that you want it you know, maybe twice as thick. And then everything else about that model will update automatically. OK. 
Okay, so this can this is this is really useful for um, making small changes to your um, to your model, and this happens all the time. You know, maybe you're designing a case for a cell phone, and you you get it made and find out it's just a little bit too wide, and the, the phone kind of rattles around in there a little bit. You might want to go back in there and adjust your your dimension a little bit just to make that slightly thinner. Um, and so that with these parametric modeling um, software, it's it's easy to do that. Okay. So that's how we make a part. And then the way that we make the drawing is after we have the part, um, we open up a drawing file, we place down a base view, and then we create um, auxiliary views uh, relative to that base. So we th those views look at the same part from different angles. So the base might be looking at it from one side, another view could be looking at it from the top, and a third view could be looking at it from the other side. And the idea is that we can see the part from, from every angle that is interesting. We could also put kind of a three-dimensional view called an isometric view on there that shows the part um, kind of as a whole. It might make it a little bit easier to understand what we're looking at. Um, and we're just scratching the surface of, the, of what this software can do in this class. This is just a brief introduction um, to some of the tools that might be useful for robotics, okay? But these, these programs can really do just a ton more things. And if you're interested in um, this type of program, these 3D modeling software, um, we have a design department here that does whole semester-long classes on, on these kinds of programs. That, so that can be very, very cool. And it's an in-demand skill as well. So. Um, it's useful in a lot of industries. So if you're if you're interested in learning more about 3D design, definitely check out our design department. Okay. Um, so, for instance, some of the other things that this program can do is in a drawing you can take a cross section. Um, so if there's something interesting in the middle of your part and you want to show that, um, you could tell the drawing to make a cross section through that part and then show uh, the part that way. So um, that's pretty cool. And like I said uh, last class, another thing that the software can do is to create exploded views of your parts. So um, we're not going to go into that in detail in this class. We're, we're not really going to cover that. But um, that's just another feature that the software has. And then um, analysis. So these designs that we have could be used to design um, you know, a suspension for a car or something like that. And you might want to know, um, how strong is that going to be? Is that going to be strong enough to support my car? Um, is it going to be stronger than I need? Maybe I can take part of the, the design away, cut out some of it to make it lighter. Um, and so uh, the software can actually do that type of analysis. You can tell it, okay, I'm going to have this much force on this point going in this direction and another force over here going a different direction. Now show me how the part would bend and whether it would break and stuff like that. And you can t test it out with different materials and things like that. So um, the software is really, really powerful and we're just scratching the surface of, of what it can do. Okay. All right. So that's a little bit about what we talked about last time. So then let's go on to so are there, are there any questions about what we did last time before we get moving? All right, so then let's go on to our main topic, which is assemblies. So again, an assembly is a way to put several parts together to, to make a, a bigger design. So um, the, the thing that we're going to work on today is a, a car. So um, you could model a car in extreme detail, you know, down to every, every single part, you know, the little 
rocker switch that, that opens the windows and closes the windows and every gear inside the transmission and things like that. We're not going to do that, okay? We are going to make a very simple model of a car that looks something like this. Um, so you can see it's got a body and it's got uh, four wheels and it's got two axles, okay? So this is just a, a very, very simplified view of a car but it gives us a chance to learn a little bit about how we put parts together into an assembly. So this is going to be our goal for today. So um, for the lecture, I will show you how to do this, and then I'll let you uh, do it, and um, that will be the lab. Okay? So that's going to be our goal. Are there any questions about that? Okay. All right. So we'll close out of this. So let me show you how we get started. So we open up Inventor and um, we'll make a new part. Um, and yeah, like I said last time, I think that the best thing to do is probably just to, to watch while I'm doing this and then uh, hold off and, and not actually build it yourself until after I'm done. That way you can focus on, on what I'm doing and you're not going to miss anything. And then when you're working on it, I'm happy to go around and, and help with that. So the first thing that we're going to uh, create here is an assembly. So there, there are two types of assemblies. We're going to create this standard uh, assembly. The other uh, option would be a weldment, which is like when you're welding two things together. And that's not what we want. So we're going to create a standard assembly. And then we can save that. Um, so um, I'm just going to save this on the desktop because I don't really need to save this long term. Um, if you want to save this, I, I know that anything that's on the desktop is going to get wiped out at midnight. Okay. So if you um, are just working on this for today, you're welcome to put it on the desktop as well. But if you want to save it longer than that, you should put it in your student drive or someplace like that. So um, I'm going to call this car assembly demo. All right. So we've created our assembly. and. Right now, there's nothing there. It's just a blank canvas. So um, an assembly by itself is not a, th it doesn't really, it's not a thing. It's just basically a container that holds um, parts. So right now we have the container, but we haven't created any parts yet. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a component. So inside my assembly, I come up here to create component, and then um, I'm going to use, I'm, I want to make a part, and I'm going to call this the car body. And then um, my cursor now has this little thing that looks like a little part attached to it. So I'm going to click anywhere in the window, and now um, I'm creating a part. And so I have the, the same uh, tools like you had last time when you were starting to create a, a new part. Um, but before I do anything else, I'm going to save this so that I, I don't lose it. So I'm going to go File, Save As, and I'm going to save it in the same place as um, I saved the assembly. And yeah, I'll save it. Uh, it looks like it, it's already saving it for me. All right, so I'm going to uh, now create a 2D sketch, and we get the same um, environment that we had before. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a very simplified outline of a car. Um, so this does not have to be fancy, okay? You're welcome to get creative with this and make it look super cool. But um, it's, it, it really doesn't have to be, okay? I'm just kind of making something that looks generally 
like a car. But feel free to get creative. You know, you could make it a truck or you could make it a, a convertible or, or whatever you like. If you, if you feel inclined to do that, go for it. Uh, but all we need is a basic outline of a car. Then we're going to finish that. Um, and then we're going to extrude this. So this is just like what we did last time, right? We made a drawing and we're extruding it. And now I'm going to go and add holes for the axles. So I'm going to do another sketch. I'm going to sketch on the side of the car. And I'm going to put in little points that will be the um, spots where I want my axles. So again, it's not critical exactly where you put these. Um, just one at the front and one at the back. So I put in my points and then I can add holes to those points. Um, and those holes are going all the way through the body, which is what I want. Uh, so I'm just going to say OK. So now, now my body is looking uh, in about the right shape. So that's good. Now, the last thing I want to do while I'm here is I want to change uh, the color of this, this body. I want it not to be just flat gray. I want it to, to look a little bit cooler than that. So the way I do that is I come up here to the, this um, very top of the screen. And um, right here, there is a drop down menu where I can choose the material that I want. So right now it's default, which is just kind of a, a grayish color. But if I click on the drop down menu, you can see that there are tons and tons of different um, options. So I could choose uh, glossy gold if I want, or uh, metallic gold, um, magenta. Yeah, any, anything you want, OK? Just um, something so that it's not quite uh, so boring. That could be really old and rusty. Um, I think I'm going for yellow today. So when I got that, um, I've got the shape of my body. I've got the holes for the axles. And I've got the color. I'm going to save that. So save that. And then when I'm all done making that part, I'm going to come up here and click on this button that says Return. So that returns me to my assembly. So I'm done working on that car for now. I can go back and work on it later. But I'm done with that for now on the body. Um, and now I'm back to my assembly. Okay. So, so now what I want to do is I want to make a wheel. So I'm going to create a new part. So I'm going to click on Create again. And I'm going to call this Wheel. And now you can see that my cursor has that little part icon next to it again. So this is telling me that I'm ready to create a part. So I want to create this, this wheel right on the side of the car. So I'm going to click on the side of the car there. And then I'm going to do another 2D sketch. And again, I'm going to click on the side of that car so that I'm sketching um, on that plane. Okay. Now, I want this wheel. The reason that I'm, I'm sketching right here is because I want this wheel to have a hole in it that's the same size as that, um, that axle hole. Okay. So I'd like to draw a circle that's right the same size as that axle. Now, again, if I try to just draw, um, I'd like for this um, point to snap right to the middle of that circle and then be able to um, kind of go to the, the same diameter as that circle. But it's not the program's not doing that for me right now. What I have to do first is that I have to click on Project Geometry. Thank so I click on that, and then I click on that circle. And now that brings the geometry of that circle into my sketch. So now um, I have that axle diameter and that axle center. And I can use that when I'm 
making my wheel. So I'm going to do that. So now I'm going to click and make um, a circle right on top of this other one. So that's going to be the, the hole in the middle of my wheel. And then I'm going to make another um, circle that's bigger that's going to represent the outside of my wheel. Okay, And then I'm going to finish that sketch. So now I've got the shape of my wheel. Now I need to extrude it into three dimensions. So um, here you'll notice that the when I have gone to extrude things before, they just kind of pop out automatically. But this one is not popping out right away because what's, what's happening is that I've actually created two separate things that could be extruded here. Um, I've, I've created two separate circles. So I could actually choose either one and the program doesn't know which one I want, so it's asking me to choose. So it's asking me to select a profile. So I could select just this middle thing. Okay, but that's not what I want. I, I actually want this other profile that's sort of this donut between the middle and the outside. Um, and, and it's actually now selected both of those. Um, so, um, so I'm going to cancel this and do this again. And I'm only going to select the, the outside profile this time. Okay. Um, so now if I, if I move around, I can see that, yeah, I've just selected this kind of donut between the middle circle and the outside, and that's what I want. Now, what, this looks like it's too wide to be a regular wheel, so I'm going to make this a little bit narrower. I'm going to make that maybe a quarter inch. That looks about the right size for a wheel to me. So I'm going to say OK. Um, and now, I could make the wheel fancier too if I wanted. I could kind of round over these edges with uh, fillets if I wanted to do that. Um, I'm definitely going to change the material so that it looks more like a tire. So I'm going to make that black. Uh, actually, I'm going to make the whole thing black. I think if I don't choose a particular face. If I choose one face, it just changes that face, I think. Um, but I believe that if I just, yeah, if I don't choose a particular face, it makes the whole thing um, that new material. All right, so now, um, now I've created my wheel there, OK? Um, again, you can make it fancier if you like, but I'm just going to leave it like that. Now. I return back to my assembly, um, but you can see that I not only have this wheel, but I've also got this kind of weird uh, semi-transparent rectangle thing here. All right, and that's a little bit strange. That is called a work plane. That that is something that the program creates when you're when you're making a new sketch in an assembly. It's saying, okay, this is a an imaginary plane where you're going to be sketching. Okay, so the the program needs that, but we don't really need to see that for our model. So what I'm going to do is um, I want to make that invisible. So I'm going to come over here and I'm looking at my wheel, and under my wheel I see that there's this work plane, and I'm going to um, right click on that, and then there is this check mark next to visibility. So I'm just going to uncheck that and then that plane goes away. It's still technically there but we just can't see it anymore. So so that's fine. All right. So I got my my car body now and I've got one wheel. So I'd like to have four wheels on this car because that's what cars have. But um, I I don't really want to go back and do the same thing three more times. Um, first of all, it would just be kind of a hassle. And also, um, it would make things a little bit difficult. You know, if I, if I decided later that um, I wanted my wheel to be a little bit uh, thicker, I'd have to go back and change that in four different places. 
I, I don't want that. I want to be able to just change it once and have it update everywhere. Okay. So rather than making three more sketches of the same wheel, I'm just going to um, place down three more copies of this same wheel that I already have. Okay. So the way that I do that is I come up here to the Place Component menu. And here I can choose which um, Yeah, I can choose which part I want. Um, hmm. This. Let's see. Maybe I haven't saved this yet. So, all right. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, but this is the. Um, this is a, a different folder. This is the example that I showed you earlier. Um, I'm working in the demo. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so there it is. All right. So I'm going to open that, and I'm just going to um, click uh, three more times, okay? And then when I'm done, I'm going to hit the escape key. Okay. So, so now I've got these three more wheels. I've got four wheels in total in my um, assembly here. But you can see that these wheels are nowhere close to where they're supposed to be, and they've also got these work planes still. So first of all, I'm going to just turn off those work planes. So I'm going to go in and undo the visibility on those. All right, and then now I want to actually make these wheels stick onto my car where they're supposed to be. And the way that I do that is with something called a constraint. So we saw some examples of constraints when we were doing drawings um, last time. So we saw that we could constrain two points to be horizontal to each other, um, which is basically just a, a rule telling the, the program that these two points have to be horizontal. Okay. Um, so when we're talking about three-dimensional drawings, you can have other types of constraints. Um, and those constraints tell the program how you want things to stick together. Okay? So the, um, the, when I click on the constrain button up here, it creates this, this window. And this has a lot of different types of constraints shown up here under the type. So the first type is a mate constraint. So this is when you're sticking two flat pieces together. So you can see that there are two different options for the way to stick two flat things together. You could um, stick them together so that they're, they're kind of stuck one face against the other, or you could stick them together so that the two faces are in the same plane, kind of like that. Um, so you could choose that. Uh, if you don't want the two things to be, you know, right in exactly the same plane, you could have them at um, an angle. So you could you could specify the angle that's supposed to be between them. You could have a um, if you have a round thing that you want to be stuck kind of on the the side of a flat thing, you could do a tangent. Um, or if you want to um, have a, a something where, where one part is inserted inside of another, you could do that. Uh, that's actually what we're going to use, so we're going to come back to that in just a second. But then, uh, finally, the last thing is you could have um, two parts be symmetrical. Okay. So, for this case, we want to um, use the insert constraint. Now, you might not think that this makes sense because we don't really have, um, we're not inserting a, like a, an axle yet, but um, we have two, we have the, the hole in the car body and the hole in the middle of the wheel, and we want those two holes to be um, concentric to each other and, and sticking right, um, right together. So this, this insert works. 
So um, I'm going to choose this opposed um, type of insert. And then I'm going to click on um, my wheel. So I'm going to click on, on the sort of the inner ring uh, for this wheel. And then I'm going to click on the, um, the outer ring for the axle there. And then um, when I do that, these two things uh, pop together. And once I do that, I have a chance to kind of um, check this out and make sure that that's actually what I want. And if that is what I want, I have to click apply on my constraint. Okay. So, and then I'm just going to do the same thing for the other wheels. So um, I'm going to again, click on the, the inner ring um, where the axle will go. I'll click on the inner ring where the axle would go through the car body and click apply. And the same thing for the last wheel. Okay. All right. So now our wheels are constrained to our car body. So um, you'll notice if I click on the edge of the wheel, I can actually rotate it. Um, there's no constraint that's preventing the wheel from rotating right now because all I did was I constrained the two faces to be next to each other and um, um, yeah, concentric circles. So um, they're, they're stuck together like that, but they can still rotate relative to each other. Okay? But I cannot um, drag the, the wheel around separate from the car if, um, because the, the wheel is, is now stuck to that car with the constraint. Okay? Um, all right, so, so now I've got my wheels stuck onto my car. The last thing that I want to do is I want to actually make axles that are going to go through the body of the car and through the wheels. Okay. So, so again, the way that I'm going to do that is I'm, um, I'm back in my assembly. So I'm going to create a new part and I'm going to call this the axle. And for this one, I'm going to click on the outer edge of a wheel and start sketching there. Um, so now I'm at this kind of crazy angle because I've rotated my wheel around, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I'm going to now create, um, basically do the same type of thing that I did last time. I'm going to project the geometry um, from the wheel so that I have this um, inner circle to work with. I'm going to sketch a circle on top of that. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm zoomed out, it's, it's hard to get it to um, pop to exactly where I want. So I can, I can zoom in um, and that makes it easier to, to get the axle exactly the right diameter that I want. And then I'm going to finish that sketch. And now I'm going to extrude my axle. And rather than going a specific distance, I'm going to go, I'm going to click on this little button here that says two, so that I'm going to go to a particular face, and then I'm going to choose the outside face of the opposite wheel, so that the axle goes all the way across. And then I'm going to say OK. And then lastly, I'm going to change the material of that axle again, so that it looks uh, a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to make, um, there, there's all different types of metal here. Um, <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, honed. Sure, that looks about right. Okay. So then I'm going to save that and then return. And now I've got my axle um, running through the car, oop, I, uh, yeah, it's, it's running through the car. Um, it looks like 
I started sketching in the wrong place. I started sketching on the the back plane of the wheel instead of the the front plane. Um, so that's not ideal. Um, let's see. So. Yeah, let me um, let me redo that. So we're going to get rid of that. We're just going to try this one more time. Make sure that I'm sketching on the outside of the wheel. Yep. All right, so now it should be going all the way through. All right. Um, Okay, so now I've got the axle in the front of my car, but I don't have an axle in the back yet. So again, I have to, um, I have to do one more um, thing. I have to place one more axle. So I'm going to come up here to place. Um, I'll choose axle two. Um, and I'm going to place this down and then hit escape when I'm done. So um, now, right now, you'll notice that this axle is just kind of free floating. So if I click on this axle, I can, I can kind of drag it around anywhere I want because it's not constrained yet, okay? Um, there's no constraints on here. There's nothing telling the program where it should be. So I can drag it wherever I want. So, um, but of course I want it to be inside of the the car body going between the two back wheels. So that's where I'm going to put it. I'm going to add a constraint here. And again, I'm going to use this insert. Now this time I'm going to use an aligned constraint where so that the the axle ends up inside of the um, the wheels in the car body. So I'm going to click on that one. And then I'm going to click on the axle and click on the outside of this wheel. Yep. And that that popped it right in. So you can see it's not sticking out either side, but it's going all the way through. So that's what we want. So we click apply. And then we save our whole model. So, so that's how we are going to create the model. Now the last thing that you want to do is we want to be able to export this. And we'd like to be able to share this with other people, um, maybe even people who don't have the Inventor program installed on their computer because Inventor is really expensive and not very many people have it. So what we can do is we can go to File, Export, and we can actually export a 3D PDF. So I'm going to click on that um, and then it's going to ask me um, where to put it. So I'm going to click here to browse and um, yeah, so it, it's got it in the car assembly demo folder. That's where I want it. And so then I'm going to say publish. And this takes a minute to create. But when it's done, we should have a PDF document that can be opened by anybody who can open PDFs that, that will actually show our 3D model. So this is a pretty cool thing. So let's see. So, OK, so it, it finished exporting. All right, so here it comes. So, um, so if we click on our default model here, oh, so up at the top it says multimedia and 3D content have been disabled. So I want to enable that. Um, OK. 
so it's thinking and then hopefully uh, now when I click on default here now it's got a, uh, a view of my car so the um, oh there we go all right so you can see the material isn't exactly the same as it was on my car this looks a little bit more boxy than uh, it did in the actual um, model but still it's a three-dimensional representation it's got the the right dimensions and I can look at it from any side that I want so it's uh, it's pretty cool okay so um, so when you're all done with making your model you're going to export it as a 3d PDF and then that's what you're going to upload to um, to canvas in order to get credit for the assignment so that's the the assignment for today. Are there any questions about that? Okay, so again, this assignment allows for some creativity. Um, what you really want to have is you want to have the car body, you want to have four wheels and two axles. But beyond that, go wild, all right? You can make the body any shape you want. Um, you can make, you know, you can make it uh, as fancy or, or customized as you like. Um, as long as you have the, the um, body, the four wheels, and two axles. Now, if you are completely lost for um, you know, where, where to get started and, and how big to make this thing, um, some, uh, some measurements that worked relatively well for me was that I made the body eight inches long, um, four inches wide, and um, about, I think, two inches tall or something like that. Um, so, so that is some place you can start if you're totally lost, but don't feel like you have to do it that way, okay? All right, so, um, so if there's no questions, I will take attendance and then we can take a short break and then um, get started.